All right, everybody, Lance here. Uh, we're going to be making a Mac uh, lookup uh, app uh, for Windows Phone 7, uh, Mango. Now, obviously, you see I built the UI, which is user interface for those who may or may not know that. Uh, but as you can see, if we go into the example.cs, there is no coding. We need to build some coding, right? Um, now, I can tell you to use uh, JSON regularly, but more people will tell you to use uh, JSON.net. So there's a very simple way of doing it in uh, uh, Visual Studio. Just simply go to Tools, Library Package Manager, and New Get Package for Solution. That's again assuming you've already installed this. Um, so now it allows you to search online. So we'll just type JSON and it'll find our uh, Newton Soft in a second. Maybe. <laughs> Give it a moment. Well, I'm getting impatient. Let's go here. And let's type JSON. There we go. JSON.net. We know it's correct because it says Newton Soft, uh, James uh, Newton King. So we'll go ahead and click Install. And because we want it on the whole solution, uh, we make sure that it's checkmarked. Uh, and go ahead and select OK. Okay, we'll go ahead and close this. Now we need to include it so that uh, Visual Studio knows, hey, now I always like to rebuild after we uh, do something like that. And the only reason being, because a lot of times it won't come up. Uh, so bear with me. So we'll do using and we'll do newt uh, JSON. Just as good as that, right? Now you see it's complaining there's no click, right? Don't worry about that right now. That's only because uh, I created the example and I've already created the click, uh, which you'll see in a few moments. Uh, but now we've went ahead and done that, but we need to go ahead and, uh, well, I guess we could go ahead and do our uh, click um, procedure. So double click the search in this case. Uh, you'll notice if we go ahead and uh, uh, rebuild, it should go away. And it has. Now, what we're going to do um, is one, let's go back to the main page real quick, just so we can see. Uh, we've created this, which is the number slash hexadecimal that you would put in for the MAC address. We want only six characters because the API we're using uh, just requires that, really. And as you see, I put this phony information in here. Um, and the only reason I did that is so I could visually see what I was doing and what we'll input. So this is what it will look like uh, once it's done. Um, but we got to get to that point. So we look here and it says text search. That's what we've called it as, right? So, but when they click the button, you know, and again, we want to do error control all the time. We want to make sure that there are no problems. So let's go ahead and make sure that they've actually inserted at least the six characters. So if we do if uh, text search uh, dot text dot length um, equals equals six. Oops. And then uh, we could go ahead and go ahead and say we're going to process the search like so. And uh, you know what else we're going to put in? Instead of using web client, I want everybody to start doing this uh, because it will make your app go super, super fast. Uh, it's called gzip, um, which I'm sure people know what gzip is, but we want sharp gis gzip web client. Um, basically, if you're already using the web client, you just simply have to rename it, really. Um, so now that that's been in here, again, let's rebuild real quick. We'll get errors because we're missing a bracket. That's fine. Um, we'll go back up here and do using uh, GS, sharp GS, um, and just like that. So now let's process the search, right? So we'll do gzip web client, um, and then we'll do web client uh, equals new g web like so. Uh, and this uh, makes the web client, uh, which you'll understand in a few moments. So now we're going to actually use this web client uh, and do download string completed. 
Uh, and this basically says once we've actually gotten the API, what are we going to do? Um, so let's go ahead and do tab twice, one, two. And now you see it was nice, it created this little uh, uh, thing for us. But let's go ahead and close this bracket just so we don't see any errors. Um, and so that looks right. And then as you see, it closed that. That was my fault. I should have closed the bracket before. But um, what can you do, right? We want to put this over. I like things to be nice and neat, right? Okay, so, where am I missing? Oh, that's right, see? I, that's why I like Visual Studio. Just a semicolon can mess things up. So right here, we're basically saying, uh, once download, go here, right? Um, so we'll now have to tell it where to go. So we'll do, um, we'll do download string async, new Yuri. And this is basically saying, hey, I have something for you to run, right? Um, so I have an API here that we're going to use. And let me copy it. And you're more than welcome to use it, which is this from MacVendorLookup.com. Completely free, no registration required. But now we have, as you see, uh, the API, our uh, API uh, basically key. And now right here is where we would be searching for the six uh, digits slash hexadecimal, whatever the input is going to be. So we will do a plus sign and then text search dot text, which is the input of whatever the person is uh, inputting. And then we'll do uh, uh, Yuri kind. Oops. And I always do relative or absolute. Um, you could do whatever you want, but I always do it to be safe. And go to this API, right? So, but here's the thing. What if they didn't put six characters? Well, obviously you would get an error. And again, we want to reduce as many possible errors, right? So we could now do else um, if text search dot text dot length, oops. Um, is not equal to six. Um, and then we'll say process error, right? Uh, so we'll just put in a message box uh, saying, sorry, you must have at least six characters. Please try again. And now, in that, and we'll put a caption saying error, uh, re-input uh, Mac. Uh, we'll just put Mac, right? And then we'll do message box button OK. And we'll end the message box like that. Um, and now this right here, if we go ahead and run it, and we will, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and run it, uh, I guess in our 512, because um, I think that's what I already had loaded eventually before. Oh, nope. I had the two, uh, 256, I think it was. Um, so while that's loading, uh, I can show you another step. So now we're, uh, already got the API. We assume that the length was proper. So now let's make sure uh, what it's downloaded, well, isn't null. So we'll do if e.error is not null. Um, then we'll go ahead and do, oops, okay, good. So our uh, thing here is loaded. It's probably gonna crash. Okay, so we don't have, uh, obviously, any input here. We haven't hidden uh, our canvas here, which is what I put there. So we ha we don't have six characters, right? So we'll go ahead and do search. Oh, sorry. You must have at least six characters. Please try, pr please try again. Pardon me. And I'm not going to put in six characters because, well, it's obviously going to crash. Um, so now we'll go ahead and do uh, message box. Oops. Dot show. And we're going to say, we're sorry, this Mac address uh, creator couldn't 
be found, which is exactly what would be happening if, uh, um, if the feed came back bad. Unknown Mac, try again. And we'll do message lock button. Oops, okay. And that, and now we want to put return because we don't want anything to occur after that. And that will kind of kill it. So here we are. So if the MAC address doesn't exist, right now we're saying it doesn't exist. And that's based off of this specific API that you could do this. Um, so we'll do if we have a valid feed, continue. Well, let's process this better. Okay. So now let's do a var JSON, uh, which again, you want to remember what your things are. And we're going to do result because that's what we want the well, result. And now we need a class here uh, based off of our, um, uh, what's it called? Our API. Now there's many sites and whatnot you can do to create it. I already have one that I created for my other project. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go into my other project here and it's called Mac class and I'm just gonna go ahead and rebuild I have a problem <laughs> okay so now we'll do Mac class oops Mac lookup dot Mac class root object right and then we'll do root object so we're defining the root object for it so now we could do something like root object um, what should we do root object equals JSON convert and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, deserialize the object and we're gonna do list like so and now we're gonna go to the Mac class right and now I might have an issue but we'll just well we'll leave it alone uh, go to the root object because that's what we're trying to deserialize and now we're gonna say our feed which is JSON because we've defined that right here as you see it's highlighted and we'll go ahead and put this here so we could get that object right and as you see it's very simple so far three lines of code here and that's basically taking the feed that came in we're saying hey take the feed result and let's uh put it as a var for json uh we're going to use our uh, mac class which is right here um and uh let's go ahead and look at the mac class as you see it says mac lookup that's a mistake because this is our project name but because it came from my other project that's why it says that I could change it, of course, but we're not going to. And as you see the root object, these are the possible uh, things that we're going to have. Because they're not lists going into another thing, uh, we can make these objects very simple without having to convert strings and blah, 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 blah. Things you don't need to know right now, as it's not important. So now that we have our root object, let's go ahead and fill in the results. So we'll say fill in result. Oops. Okay, so we want to make sure it exists before we try to fill anything in. So we'll do root object, and as you see, now we're getting stuff from our Mac class. So these are the items from the API. So we'll start with the uh, company, because I believe that was the first thing we had. So if not, no. Oops. So let's go back up. And we'll go ahead and do text company dot text. And again, you always want to label your items so you know what it is, even if it's going to be long as hell. Just do it. Uh, and we'll do company. So now right here we're saying if it's not empty, let's go ahead and make text company dot text the incoming uh, you know this deserialized item, uh, which would be the company from the API. So we go here and we just will look where that's going to go so we can visually know. Okay, where it's is Dell Computers since that's text company. Very simple, right? So now we'll put else and then we'll go ahead and put uh, uh, text company dot text and we'll go ahead and put an error here saying error uh, company unknown, right? And that will do it for that and that'll get you the company. 
right? And because now we've put a canvas here, and the reason I put a canvas is because this is our search results. And as you see, if I deleted it, it would be gone. And I put the result, uh, the canvas on top of the grid only because, again, I don't want this to display when the app is there. So we could go ahead and just copy this, like so. And again, it's the canvas. So now, when we start the program, which main page means the main things that are going to start up. So we can do can results dot visibility equals visibility dot collapse, meaning close, and visible would be obviously visible, right? So here we technically have a working uh, program. So we'll go ahead and launch her up. Right, so here we go. And as you see here, we don't have the results anymore. That canvas, I can click whatever I want, it's gone, right? Uh, and that's because of what we've done right here. So now if we go ahead and type search, oh, sorry, not gonna work because we don't have six characters, right? Um, so now we could go ahead and go back here. Um, and I'm trying to think of one that will work. Because <laughs> uh, because we don't have the error control you know, proper, this could crash. And, uh, well, it's going to crash because we don't have a working one. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, grab it from my phone here. I apologize, everybody. I should have been prepared for this. Um, so we'll go ahead and reload the program. Like so. Right? So we'll go ahead. And now, mind you, you should always test to make sure it works both in the 215 and the 512 emulator. It's just a good thing to get used to. All right. So now we'll go ahead and do B0. And we'll do D0. And we'll do 9C. And we'll go ahead and press search. I did press search, right? <laughs> uh, let's make sure I did it properly. I'm pretty sure I did. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you know why we're having a problem, guys? Because Lance is a little bit stupid. <laughs> well, here we go. Here's our problem, right? Uh, can the results visibility equals visibility dot visible. That's why we had a problem, folks. Wow. How sad, right? So, that was a big no-no on my part, huh? See, you try to be fancy and you get slapped in the face. <laughs> so, B0, D0. But the good news, it did work, and we know that because it didn't crash on us, and we'll prove it. So now, by pressing search, we should see the company name. And voila. Uh, obviously, uh, the search results for is incorrect, um, which w the reason that is is because we didn't put that uh, capability in. But as you see, Samsung Electronics Co. LTD. That's absolutely correct. Now, as you see, search results for, well, there's a real easy way to do that and we'll do that before we end the video here so we'll go real quick and check to see what it was what we labeled it and we have it lbl which it would be label even though it's a text block uh, and we'll do uh, dot text equals text search dot text so basically we're saying fill in uh, the, the label with the text search which would be the input they put in now that's not necessarily a good way to do it especially if they clear it somehow real quick but nonetheless it, it's so fast that they really couldn't mess it up but nonetheless that will change it and again if you just copied this and changed company and your actual items perfect Right? So we'll do one last time running it uh, just so you could see um, real quick what I was talking about grabbing the text uh, box um, information. Um, and again, let me go ahead and type it in. So that's going to go ahead and be B0. 
uh, D, zero, nine, C, and search. And as you see, search results four, and it captured that because that's what we originally put in. You see, you can't click, you can't change it, uh, again, because it's a text block. Um, once you put it in, that's it. Um, now, if you did a text box, that'd be another story. But nonetheless, this Microsoft Way, etc., is absolutely incorrect. This is not the, the uh, Samsung information, obviously. Probably be China. Uh, but as you see, we told it to put in the root object, which we got from our class file right here. Um, and as you see, but it did get the company correct because that's from my Samsung uh, Focus Flash. Anyways, guys, this source code will be available for all of you XDA people. Look in the form uh, for the Windows Phone 7 development. And uh, I will actually fill in the rest of the coding for you guys um, and get you out of here. But thank you so much for watching, and uh, Lance Seidman for XDA TV.